Oh, it's McLaurin. Today I'm playing Liralusk, but uh, not the expensive version. The new main box just came out, and and chances are many of you are like, I can't build. That looks too expensive. I can't build that. So here's a free-to-play version for you to try out instead. So full disclosure, I am taking huge inspiration, if not completely ripping off the deck lists from Nendo, who was the first person, uh, to my knowledge, to card with the pre-main box release of Liralusks. And this decklist more closely resembles the decklist from Floga, who they called with uh, just, I think, before the main box release still, uh, which was the main inspiration for, for this iteration of the deck. But the idea is very simple. Uh, you want to use a couple of, like, rank 1 enablers, uh, such as Cobalt Sparrow, Sapphire Swallow, and Simorg, Bug of Beginning, which is the level 1 that allows you to normal summon another level 1, which is kind of neat. So you can go into Liralisk, Assemble Knight and Gale, preferably with 3 materials, so it has 600 attack. Then you activate the skill XC Storm Race, so you give it another 800 attack, so that's 1400 attack that can attack thrice directly, so that's usually, usually going to be lethal. We have many ways of getting to our playmakers. We are playing Wind, the Wind Shaller, which can pitch a Simulk Bug of Divinity, uh, which can then special itself if your opponent does no back row from Grave, that's, that's actually kind of cool. Then we also have Swallow's Nest, an internal classic for Wing Beast Archetypes. Where Art Thou, which is a really, really funny card. We do not care all that much about the uh, 2000 life point loss because we do start with a bonus 1500. And then we just our rank 1 toolbox is comprised of a symbol Nightingale, which is like the, the key card in Psychotype, the one monster that you want to make to keep your opponent dead. Uh, Resettle Starling, which can also boost your Assemble Nightingale, has a really cute effect where it's basically a Mizunus swords uh, Swordswoman, uh, sort of. It has zero attack if you sh choose not to boost it. Definitely. Also, you can search a Winged Beast, which uh, I think is pretty neat. Sylvan Princess Bright, which searches back row, sort of. Kinda. Hard to convince about this one. Promenade Thrush, which uh, gets rid of back row. I guess it can also boost your Assemble Nightingale, which is that's pretty cool. And Shamoji Soldier, which is just a weird little weird little fellow, popcorn ass looking kinda guy. And then you know, just a bunch of good links. Another thing that's interesting to note about this deck is that a uh, Sapphire Swallow allows you to attach an additional material from Grave to the monster the XC summon. And Cobalt Sparrow prevents the XC's uh, summon monster from being targeted with card effects, which a lot of people don't really know about because this is not printed on the card that you summon, but rather it, it's a, a a a trait passed on by the card that uses it. Like C summon, uh, kind of like I can't think of a good analogy, but there's a couple of cards that do that also that you have to know. Uh, remember the first time I got tripped by this kind of effect was with a relinquish that was ritual summoned using like the gin that makes it immune to traps. I was like, ah, shit. <laughs> So anyway, that's 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 the deck. It's rank one turbo. It's free to play ish. Uh, the Nendo version uses doesn't use like DD Crows or Win the Win Channeler, so it's even more accessible. One for one is there. I guess maybe you could cut it for the uh, Ensembler Robin, that which is I guess easily. Uh, it's it's a bundle car. It's also limited one, and it makes it, the deck have a better turn one. But one for one's kind of neat. Anyway, let's check out a couple of replays. This here replays against everyone's favorite deck, Blue Eyes, uh, and it's going to showcase how this deck is uh, doing going second. Because this is a deck that you want to OTK with really quick. I didn't equip my usual um, mats or sleeves, so that's that's on me. We're putting a grip full of monsters. That's that's kind of funny. They're gonna summon Dragon Spirit of White and then activate uh, Battle Chronicle to get the Successor Soul. Stop me if you've seen this play before. Set two and pass. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to normal summon Simorg Bird of Beginning, activate the effect in order to try and bait out something. Then I'm going to activate the Sapphire Swallow, which can special itself and the Cobalt Sparrow. I'm going to choose to not activate the Cobalt Sparrow effect to search a level 1 Winged Beast monster from my deck, uh, because I don't want to give my opponent the opportunity to like interact with me. Like, sure, I'm going to pass priority to them, but if I activate something, they might go like, Oh, this is this is an issue. I'm gonna click the car and then get the crackdown or success or so. But if you don't do that, uh, some opponents are not gonna do anything. They're just gonna be like, all right, so I'm monster. That's fine. But if you activate an effect, that's, that's scary. I don't know why I keep changing voices. Anyway, I'm just gonna immediately exceed summon a little assemble nine gale. 
uh, which is the boss monster of the psychotypes. You can start at 600 attack and be able to attack thrice, and it's gonna take uh, get tar targeting uh, protection. That's kind of a sweet animation. I forgot how it was in the anime when uh, Blue summoned it. Anyway, they're gonna activate Majestic with Fires of Blue in response to the Cobalt Sparrow uh, passed down effect, uh, but they already can target the Assemble Nine Angel, so like, ah, shit. Well, I guess I have to target the Dragon Spirit of Light. Which they're gonna do, activate this Galaxy Storm Rays to boost this guy's attack 40. Bam! It's a Torrance! That can attack twice! Bam! It can attack twice! And uh, third time for lethal! Bam! And that's how you win the game with with uh, Lyrilisks, basically. Yeah, that's kinda neat. Kind of, kind of a neat duel here. Uh, that's what you get for playing Blue Eyes and uh, not knowing what new world cards do. And this, this here duel is a really fun one. It's going to be against Sharks, and unfortunately for me, I'm going first. Oh no! I don't want to be in this position <laughs> where I go first with a deck that is designed at OTKing and, and going second. This end is not too bad, you know, that's, 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 that's kind of a cool hand. So, uh, when the wind channel is going to pitch Simok Better for Divinity, get me a Savoy Swallow. I'm going to one for one the Savoy Swallow for a Cobalt a Sparrow. Cobalt uh, Sparrow is then going to get me a DD crew. Then I'm going to be able to use the Burger Beginning effect engrave in order to do special summon it. Shout out to the guy that really likes Simorgs, by the way. I wonder how they're doing. Uh, no Simorg support have been announced yet, but someday maybe. Uh, then I'm gonna, just going to seize into Assemble Nightingale. It's only going to have two materials this time, so it's not ever going to be able to UOTK, which I guess is kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of a shame. Um, but you got to do what you got to do. Anyway, uh, put it over there in attack position, set MST, it's untargetable thanks to the Cobble Sparrow. That's all it does. Uh, this is where the second effect of a simple Nightingale, I guess this is the third, but the activated effect of a simple Nightingale is going to be really cute. Uh, anyway, I'm going to activate this effect now uh, because I'm scared that I'm not going to have a chance to later when they inevitably summon the uh, Utopic Ray Lancer. Anyway, they're going to bring back the right hand shark from Grave, they're going to try and bring back left hand shark, but oh no, I have the DD Crow, I saved the DD Crow for this occasion. Searchable DD Crow, by the way, that's going to shape up the middle a little bit. They still have a Burst Soul Shark that they're going to summon, uh, summoning another Burst Soul Shark, so they can go into Castel de Sky Blaster Masketeer. Uh, and then, uh, I think Castel, uh, target one face of Carl and Fierce, I don't know why they didn't activate it, because uh, I know that they haven't read... Uh, the uh, graveyard effect of, uh, not the graveyard, the Xyz effect of, of uh, which one is it? Cool Spire? Anyway, uh, they're gonna get a more Xyz, they're gonna get your Black Ray Lancer, and I know that you haven't read because they're gonna flip the Black Ray Lancer here, activate the Shark Magic combo in order to equip it uh, with the left hand shark, and then detach the left hand shark in order to uh, try and target my uh, fucking assembled Lion Gear, but it doesn't work, so I have to target the Black Ray Lancer, they're gonna go to end phase, in end phase I'm gonna MST the set back row, which is a needle ceiling, which would have been an issue for me. Uh, I did top deck a bird, so that's cute. So I'm gonna be able to bring back a bit of divinity from the grave, summon another bird of divinity. And I'm kind of fucked. There's not much I can do here, actually. I can't really OTK, but I can go into Resetal Starling, uh, which is another decent wrong one option. It's going to boost the Assembly United and Gale uh, by 600, get a DD Crow. And then I'm going to Xyz Storm Race in order to boost it to 16, attack directly for 16, and then crash into uh, the uh, Black Relancer. So we both take 21, because Resetal Starling has this effect where uh, you've read the card. You know what it does. Anyway, I'm going to use the effect of a simple Nightingale uh, to protect it once again. They're going to try to activate Left and Shark, but I also have DD Crow one more time. And uh, they're going to set a card, they're going to normal summon Right and Shark, and they're going to get the Left and Shark search, which, uh, good for them. Good for them. They're going to activate Castel, uh, they're going to have to put the Black Red Lancer back into the extra. Haha, <laughs> silly you. And we're going to put Trap Tricks of Fleecia in defense, switch Castel to defense, and that's the end of the game. Uh, because they can't target my stuff. I can just attack, uh, even if this is needle ceiling, I win the game, because <laughs> I can't activate it. What a silly game. What a silly game that was. I was basically, I was basically playing Watts this game. Isn't that fun? So that's the deck, that's what it does. It's a gimmicky jank build that kind of falls off the second your opponent realizes they have to stop you from using Cobalt Sparrow's material, or they have something like a warning point. Uh, Dingesu, of course, Dingesu being one of the cards of all time. Uh, Bollard, I think, would also work here and be really, really funny to use against this. 
Uh, what else would work? I did lose a game against Raid Raptors because they summoned the Revolution Falcon, and that just says make make any monster that that battles with his scouts attack zero. We can't really do damage with it anymore. So you have to basically use Resonal Starling to crash into your opponent's monster, which is not the greatest game plan ever. However, I do believe that Liberalisk with the the new support, the Bird Call, and the uh, what's the little what's the little one? Cobalt Canary. It's something Canary. There's a canary and then there's the uh, other thing. I do believe this deck is going to be really good because it has this sort of inevitability. Like if it goes second and it wipes the field clean or it doesn't get to face too much opposition, it just wins. It just wins the game instantly, especially considering the really strong Lyrilisk skill that uh, we're also getting, which um, makes this deck maybe a bit problematic. Maybe in a week or so we're all going to hate this deck. And this is all going to be uh, my fault. Probably not. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you in particular to Dingus, Dardis Boy Zero, Zinia, Jimmy, and Yannick for their donations on coffee. I really appreciate that. And uh, what else is there to say? I'm looking forward to pulling some good Liberalist cards and Time Thieves cards, please, please, so I can play these decks that actually seem fun. I don't want the Dogmatica cards and I don't want the Gaia cards, but apparently this is what I fucking get. <laughs> Anyway, thank you once again for watching, take care everyone, and I will see you all next time.